the, the guy in the White House is chuckling all night here, showing the Democrats can't even get a three-car funeral organized, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I would say to the people of Iowa, well, the last person leaving Des Moines, please turn out the lights. Warning. The political trade features probabilities and perspectives about politicians, political parties, political outcomes, and political wagering. The political trade is rated NSFP, not safe for partisans. This is The Political Trade, the podcast for people with a passion for politics, probability, and profits. I'm Jeff Joseph, the editorial director of Luckbox Magazine, and I'm hosting the podcast where conservatives and liberals, Republicans and Democrats, partisans and wingnuts all come together to make money betting on politics. The political trade is for gamblers and investors and probability nerds and political geeks interested in wagering real money in the prediction markets at predictit.org. Predicted is a fun, legal online exchange that lets users trade in political and economic outcomes. It's like a stock market for politics, and it trades 24-7. Our guest today is Scott Supak, a seasoned prediction market trader who's posted a better than 300% return in 2019. Later on, Scott's going to share a prediction market trading tactic that he uses to achieve his outstanding returns and we will review his current best trades. So to get the most out of this podcast, you should open up predictit.org, click on the Markets tab in the top left, follow along, and leave your ideologies at the door. How are you, Mike? Well, I tell you, Jeff, I'm doing well. I'm really excited for the first episode of this podcast. It is the first episode. That is Mike the Mike, our producer, who is an editor at Luckbox Magazine and also a rookie prediction market trader. And Mike, why don't you introduce today's guest? Yes. So our guest today comes from Cooperstown, New York. He is known on Predictit at as at Supac, and on Twitter you can follow him at s Supac. Uh, he's been a Predictit trader from the very start. We're talking November 2014, but he's been trading on prediction markets long before that. He was on Intrade in 2004, and uh, at the time of this recording, he's ranked. 67th in Predictit's All Predictors Leaderboard with a 382.9% return on investment over the past year. Uh, one other interesting note about Scott is he is the grandpa of Predictit. Let's start with that, Scott. Why, why are you with a grandpa of Predictit? I recently became a grandfather for the first time. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. It's not the age, it's the mileage. It's not the mileage, but you've been at it for a long time. <laughs> I know that, you know, we were speaking over this past weekend, exchanging messages uh, during the Super Bowl, and by Super Bowl on Sunday, you had already placed a couple of hundred trades at that time, so you are an active super trader. You were introduced to us by Predicted when we asked them, uh, who are some of your super traders, and, and your name came up. We profiled you in a magazine story at Luckbox Magazine a couple months back, and, and here we are today. You were the obvious choice for our first guest, and that puts you in the hot seat to make some sense out of the last couple days. Scott, make some sense for us out of the <laughs> Iowa primaries. Oh, don't start with a tough question. Um, first of all, I think Predicted had did pretty well. We had a few problems, one of which is that Joe was overpriced. And there's a lot of theories about why, but the, the Joe Biden collapse uh, astounded even a lot of professional tra traders. So if you, if you start by looking at what happened to Joe, you can kind of make sense of a lot of other things. Uh, the reason Pete is doing so well is because the caucus is like an electoral college and he's getting bonuses for the rural areas that we thought Joe would get. Where do you started in the Iowa market? Were you buying Biden uh, yeses out of the gate, or what was your initial I, trade in that market? I rarely buy yeses right out of the gate. Uh, it's part of my negative risk strategy, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I like to first try to just short the obvious no's. We call it short the gimmies. Um, there were people in that market that would that were never going to have a chance. And if you get your nose on them early, then you get a, a, an early start on profit, and you can then play with that profit, and you're playing with house money. Well, that's why we have you on uh, as our first guest. Uh, Mike and I are both rookie traders on Predicted. My very first trade on Predicted was the purchase of Buttigieg uh, shares in Iowa. Bought them in the low teens, and I did not hold them 
all the way through. So that my, my first trade was giving away a nice return. And I, I think that's a difficult thing is to keep your personal politics out of trading. So how do you do that? Oh, that's tough. First, let me say that uh, I would never ever sell all of something that I still kind of like. Uh, you could have sold a good bit of it, taken profit and paid for the rest as a free ride. So take that advice for what it may be. How you keep your political bias out, that's tough. Everybody's going to have their own ways. I personally try to not watch the politicians. I don't like to watch television news. I get most of the news I need from either Twitter or looking at the price because the market's going to tell you the news first anyway. If, if you've seen the news and go to the market, you've already missed. Well, well, let's step back for a moment and tell our listeners a little bit about how predicted trading works. In short, this is a binary option market. Uh, every market, so a market might be who's going to win the Iowa primary, and you'll have your choice of the candidates from Biden to Sanders to Buttigieg to Warren, and each has a price ranging somewhere from a penny to a dollar. When the event concludes and there's a winner in any particular market, that trade closes out, that position closes out at a dollar. But in the interim, you don't have to hold these to what would be the equivalent in the options market as expiration. You can trade at any time, anywhere between one penny to 99 cents. And that really is the bulk of your activity, I would guess, right? You are, you are a Absolutely. trader and not a buy and hold investor on predicted. I, I don't have any steadfast rules. Every market is different. I try to look at each market and decide what the best tactic is for that market. Generally, I try to buy the nose on obvious losers first so that I'm always playing with house money. I have strict pay-go rules. I don't like using my own money on anything. So, you know. And, uh, and to explain that terminology, it's another interesting option that exists. So for any particular market in the underlying contracts, if you're buying, uh, for example, if you wanted to buy... Um, in the South Carolina Democratic primary today, Joe Biden is a 59 cent yes, but you could also buy a no on Joe, meaning he's not going to win the primary for 41 cents. So buying yeses or buying noes are the two ways to approach this market. And that's what uh, that's what Scott's referring to about buying noes. Yes. And the noes on predicted are linked. It's a linked market. So if you if you have a market with a limited number of possibilities, um, it's complicated, but I'll just, we'll save that for the tactics part. But the, the trick here is, yes, you can short people. And right now I'm looking at Biden in South Carolina and he still looks overpriced to me. Well, we start our, we start our episodes talking about the current trends. When we spoke right before our airtime, you told me what was keeping you up at night was trying to determine who's going to take over what lane. Well, what do you mean by that? Who's splitting the vote? In the case of Sanders and Warren, they tend to be splitting the progressive vote. And that leaves, you know, the moderates are splitting the vote, taking votes away from Biden, which makes me question why Bloomberg even got in the race. He was supposedly doing it to stop Bernie and what he's doing is helping Bernie. Uh, it, you know, it's a tricky thing. So you have to wonder who's going to split the moderate vote now if Joe continues to implode. It looks like Bloomberg has a, a very easy path uh, unless Pete can stop him. But But which one of those two fellows, both of whom have problems with minority voters is going to win the South. So maybe jokes can still pull off South Carolina. It's it's going to be tough. You really it's going to a lot's going to depend on what happens in New Hampshire. Oh, last week, you believe that Warren was underpriced. Do you still feel that way? Just from Iowa, it looks like Warren was woefully underpriced. And it makes me wonder if there had been a second and third place market for Iowa, how Warren would have done in the third place, which is what she would have wound up winning. How cheaply could I have gotten Warren yeses for third place Iowa. I think the confusion that you have with uh, Warren in Iowa is one that Warren uh, herself shares. So we're back from Iowa. Wow. Um, but here's what we know. It's a tight three-way race at the top. We had a bumpy start to the democratic process yesterday in Iowa. Yeah, bumpy start is a good way of putting it <laughs> for Warren. <laughs> it's, yes. So is um, there... I would, yeah, she's right. It's a tight grouping. It's Pete, looks like at the moment, Pete 14, Bernie 12, and, and Liz 8, and Joe 6. So it's, it's, you could say it's a tight group of four. You could really say, if you wanted to be more truthful, that it's a tight group of two. It's Pete versus Bernie. But Liz is eight, she, doing better than Biden when he was priced at 28 and she was priced at eight a week out. 
really makes me think that there's something going on that's holding Liz's price down. Now, there's a lot of people on Predicted we call pumpers. Uh, you'll see Rainbow, Jeremy, a couple others who pump incessantly. They're constantly pumping a position or counter pumping. You can't really be sure what it is they're trying to say. And they're um, pumping them on the chat boards or? Yeah, on the chat boards and on Twitter. And they try to they try to make it sound like, you know, something is not going to happen or something is going to happen in order to get better prices for themselves. So it's hard to know what he's doing. But a lot of people are pumping against Warren in Massachusetts and for Bernie because he's a neighbor and because Massachusetts is super liberal. They think Bernie should do better. And because she didn't perform that well in her Senate race, they think maybe she's not going to perform that well in the primary. I'm not so sure. Um, she looks underpriced. I just, I, you know, sometimes I'm biased. I like Warren, but there's a certain kind of pattern here that, that Iowa has, has pointed out yet again. And I, sorry, I don't have more examples next time. Maybe we could get into it, well, but there are, there are underpriced women all over the site. Let's hear a little bit more from mayor Pete. By all indications, we are going on to New Hampshire victorious. Ah, uh, yes, the uh, famous victorious speech that was delivered before any results came in from the Iowa caucuses. That made uh, Twitter headlines everywhere. Well, this is an interesting point that, that my group that I work with uh, talked about, which is that uh, Clinton did something similar uh, against Bernie last time. And the idea being that if your internals are showing that you won, then you need to get in the news cycle and claim you won. And Pete was right. They had that they had just enough data to know that they were doing really well in the in the in the suburbs and the rural areas. And he called it right. You know, he'd looked like a fool if he'd have been wrong, but I don't think he would have said it if there was a possibility that he was wrong. No, I, so you know But Scott, I know we, that you we jumped you, on it. You you follow Twitter pretty closely, so you must have seen that uh hashtag mayor cheat was one of the biggest <laughs> trending <laughs> things on Twitter uh, the past couple days. Do you think that's going to affect how people approach Mayor Pete looking forward to these other future primaries? I don't know. I think Twitter is a weird universe. Uh, first, I try not to get lost in the partisan Twitter. I spend a lot of time at election Twitter, and I highly recommend that you find the, the election Twitter people who are really good. There's a lot of them. They do great work. They do great detailed maps all kinds of great research. It's a terrific resource. We do recommend that listeners follow you on Twitter because you are somewhat active. You're at SSUPAC at, on Twitter. Yes, Is that that's right. S-S-U-P-A-K. That's correct. But the mayor cheat hashtag is kind of a, uh, a lot of us discount it because it's Bernie bro talk. It's trash talk from the Bernie bros. So we don't really pay a whole lot of attention to that kind of thing. There's been a lot of stabs at Pete from the Bernie people and he <laughs> kind of washed, let it fall off his back and went right on and won. So I'm not sure it's going to have any impact at all. I think people that are out there voting just aren't as tuned in as we are. And this is one of the things that, that my group constantly reminds ourselves about that we're way ahead of the curve on a lot of this stuff. And it takes days or even weeks sometimes for things to affect markets. And uh, sometimes you get into it so fast and then you don't see it move and you think you were wrong. And then you get out of it, and a week later, it turns out you were right. You just didn't hold on long enough. So it's tricky. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to matter that much. I don't think people out there are paying much attention to, to Twitter, frankly. It, well, it is tricky, and so much of your strategy each day relies on what appears to be one of your primary tactics and strategies, which – which we're really pleased that you plan on sharing with us right now. So I know it's all about negative risk, and let's move on to the tactics portion, and maybe you can really explain how you utilize ne negative risk on predicted.org. Anybody who wants to play at this game really should read the rules first. You need to look, know what a, a linked market means. It's all about getting margin and reducing your risk. So if you buy no's in multiple contracts, you only have to pay for that first set of no's. The second contract, you're gonna get money back. The third contract, you're gonna get money back because every time you reduce your risk. The other set of rules you always need to read are the rules of each market. Uh, when you started the podcast, you, you jumped right into the how it works, trading money back and forth. That's a big mistake. Don't ever do that. Read the rules. If people, uh, there were so many people in the Iowa market that had no idea that what we were betting on was the final state delegate equivalents, not the raw first alignment vote. And there's some problem sometimes predict it doesn't do a really good job writing the rules. Uh, so they have to make revisions or, you know, tiebreaker rules at the last second, that kind of thing. Um, so you, you, you really need to do a lot of research before you ever put a single penny into a, into a market. 
Um, and now the negative risk tactic is just using that reduced risk. It's not necessarily an arbitrage, although there are markets where you can walk in right now, presidential market, for example, and if you bought one no of everybody at current price, you would literally make money. Um, you just bet no on everybody and there's negative risk arbitrage immediately available. My tactic is more of a short the obvious no's or what we call the gimmies. Take those gimmies and then you have a whole bunch of house money to work with. If you buy more no's at higher prices, you can work your way into a situation where you've actually gone into negative risk, which is money in your pocket immediately. And it'll actually show in parentheses in your in your risk. Well, to make this practical and actionable for listeners, can you give us an example in a specific market as the opportunities in no's? Can you illustrate that through a market? I could. Um, At the moment, if you go to the to the presidential market, just let me get there. Uh, the, The prices are all the way I do it is I add up the price of every single contract. So if you go down, uh, let me get to it. Sorry, I don't have it up right now. But um, if you go to the presidential market and you start look at the prices, it's 51 cents for Trump, 26 cents for Sanders, 13 cents for Bloomberg. Just go down the sheet and add up those prices. And if it's more than a hundred and eight, a dollar eight, if it's more than a dollar eight, there's negative risk there. The eight cents is for the fees. You have to take into account that they're going to take 10% of every prop, every profitable trade and 5% on the way out the door. So the trick is to buy it as, buy all the no's as cheaply as you can. Well, in the presidential market, if you go back and look, let's see, I got Mark Cuban for 98 cents. <laughs> I maxed no on Tulsi Gabbard, Paul Ryan, Nikki Haley, Beto, I, got, I maxed no at 86 cents. Um, there are so many people that never had a chance to be president on that list. Same with the democratic nomination list. I think I got Oprah for 95 cents knows on Oprah for 95. Oprah was never going to be the democratic nominee. So to, to be clear though, uh, you're buying at 99 cents, the opportunity to make that one cent. Uh, will you buy as high as 99 cents all the time? And Um, you'll do that because if you already have, taken a position in that same market, any subsequent no doesn't require you to outlay the cash. In fact, it gives you cash back. So if I already have a max at 99 cents on somebody and I'd max somebody else at 99 cents, I get $8.58 back. So you are picking up pennies all day long. Pick, well, some a, a woman that used to play, and there aren't very many, once said that she spends most of her time in front of the steamroller picking up pennies. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I, I recall that woman. <laughs> She works for 538 now. And and there's over 100,000 traders. Uh, Predicted told me in the last three months, more than 50,000 people have placed trades. And of course, those numbers grow materially going into the general election. What one of the rules about a sustainable investment strategy is that once the market catches on to it, money starts flooding into that marketplace and ultimately arbitrages those opportunities away. We saw it in the securities markets with strategies like merger arbitrage, where as more and more money came into through merger arbitrage funds, those spreads no longer existed. Have you seen that occur in the predicted prediction markets? In, in fact, no. Uh, what happens with us is the more people in a market, the more biases get involved and the more they push those yes prices up. And the higher those cumulative yes prices go, the cheaper the no prices are. And, and generally, there's just not enough people who understand my end of things to keep these prices down. One of the biggest complaints we see from pundits, especially Nate Silver, is that there are hugely mispriced things like Yang going for 10 cents. Um, this is because for every, you know, share for 10, every 10 shares that a guy buys for a dime for Yang, uh, I have to pay 90 cents for them. So with an $850 limit, they can buy a whole lot more yeses than I can buy noes. And there's just not enough people who are in there buying noes to keep those prices down. It's a shame. It's, it's not that hard to understand once you, get, once you get used to it. And where would you send listeners to learn a little bit more about uh, the purchase of noes? Is that uh, a good resource on the site for that to predict it? Uh, they have a page that explains it, but you know I'm a big believer in, uh, in learning by doing. So once you've read the rules, just go into a market and buy five, 10 shares of, of, of someone no, and try to get put in bids and be patient. Wait to get the cheapest no's you can. 
uh, look at the candle chart and find the trading range and put yourself inside that trading range so that you'll be sure to get what you what you want. You know, you don't want to put up a bunch of bids that don't get met because then you're wasting your time. So get in that trading range, get them as cheap as you can, but get them and then see what happens. You'll see what I mean. If, if you add up the prices of a market and it's crazy, like a dollar 20, jump in there and buy some nose and you will immediately get money back and you'll see what I mean. And the more you do it, the better at it you'll get. Okay. And I know you're uh, putting a lot of nose in all day. Recently, you purchased a Bluetooth uh, number pad so you don't have to take your hand off the mouse to enter in orders, right? It's one of my best tips. <laughs> you are a hyper trader. That's a super trader tip. I, I, got, I, got, I kept moving my hand off my mouse to, to move my keypad and to enter numbers. And I, I finally thought, why am I doing that? I could just learn, teach my left hand to enter numbers. It took about a month. It's <laughs> this, hard. It's hard. <laughs> of course, this strategy that you shared with us, if you were to estimate of the, that's an overwhelming return you had last year at 360% plus. That's uh, actually low. I was much higher than that. But it when the when November 8th came around, the election rolled out of the average. I was well over 2,000% last year. It, those are amazing numbers. What portion of your overall return would you attribute uh, to negative risk and buying nose? Well, negative risk, uh, it get, the term gets thrown around a lot. I don't really have a lot of negative risk markets. I, I do play the vice presidential markets because they keep adding names. Now, I've got everybody in the vice president shorted as cheap as I could get them. And every time they add a new name, I buy those nose and I get free money. Is Nina uh, Turner on your short list in the vice president is. market? She, she is, but uh, you know, I don't really, I, it doesn't matter to me who's going to be vice president. What matters to me is how cheaply I can bet against them. <laughs> and the cheaper I can bet against each one of them, the more money I make in the long run. On the vice presidential for Republicans last time, I had almost a thousand dollars in neg risk. There's a trader, uh, Jason Pipkin on on Twitter is at Jipkin. You guys should have him on your show. Uh, terrific guy. He does a sheet that shows you what the perfect negative risk would have been. Uh, last I looked, it was something like twenty seven hundred dollars if you'd have played Dem Nom Democratic nomination exactly right. You could have gotten three thousand dollars in negative risk. Uh, so yeah, there's. I mean, the big markets. I'll do that because it's free money, and you don't have to worry about guessing right or going in there daily and making trades to keep up with the news and that kind of thing. I mean, you have to to some degree, but it's a lot easier because you don't. You're just trying to get the cheapest nose you can get on everybody. So look to the no shares. So uh, Nancy Reagan was right. Just say no, right? Uh, yes. Now, the, but the other trick now is that I've moved past that. And in other markets, I do what I said earlier, short the gimmies. But then you can use, you can do what I call directed negative risk. So I might not ever buy a, a yes share in a market. The only time I ever buy a yes share is when I'm really sure that that's going to happen. Like I did with Pete once we saw what was happening. Um, but I'll flip in that case. I'll give you the quick story. I bought Pete. Uh, nose in the 60s and then he plummeted down into the 80s and when we saw what was happening i got to sell all those pete nose in the 80s for profit and flip over to yeses which i got then got to ride back up so it's a double kind of you know whammy i i, I made money going both ways on that one now the trick with that is that i could have just sold all those no's and not bought any yeses and still done very well on pete because i had no's on everybody else so it's all a question of how much risk you want to take on so what I could have just laid off buying the Pete yeses, waited till his price went up and then bought more cheap nose. And that would be immediate money back into my pocket. And we, and we should note that for any one of these given markets, you are maxed out at $850. Is that per market or per contract? Per contract. One of my complaints is that people that play like I do should the, the original uh, no action letter from the CFTC was kind of just worried about protecting investors and not wanting them to be able to bet too much. But by limiting no side buyers to 850 per contract, you've, you've, you've cut us off from the basic idea of protecting us. If I'm in negative risk, I don't need the CFD's protection. So the limit should apply to no side players on the market as a whole instead of per contract. And then I could just keep doing negative risk forever because I'd never get to $850 in risk. I don't know. It's hard to get the CFTC to do anything, though. So, <laughs> the no action the the no action letter you're referring to is what allows predicted to be legal in all fifty states. It's basically a, a platform that originated out of New Zealand for academic purposes, and the data that is being acquired by this platform is being used in predictive forecasting modeling and crowdsourced uh, 
uh, crowdsource modeling for forecast capabilities, and and that's why Predicted even exists and is able to exist. Well, you make it sound easy, so I, I know our <laughs> listeners are going to wait till after uh, this this quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to ask you for what your three best trades are right now. Uh, but first, want a little more luck in your life? Get Luckbox, the control freak's guide to life, money, and probability. Named the best new magazine of 2019. Luckbox is a must-read for side hustlers, gamblers, entrepreneurs, and active investors. Each issue features best bets from prediction market experts, as well as timely sports wagering, stocks, options, futures, and cryptocurrency trading ideas. You can buy Luckbox on newsstands, but with this special offer, listeners of The Political Trade can receive a 10-issue digital subscription absolutely free. Just visit GetLuckBox.com to receive the award-winning magazine right in your inbox. Don't rely on luck. Get Luckbox for free today. Learn more at GetLuckBox.com. All right, we're back with you. And Scott Supak is our special guest, a super trader over at Predicted.org. By the way, you can be trading at Predicted.org as well. To open an account is as simple as going to Predicted.org forward slash promo slash TPT20. So if you go to predictit.org slash promo slash TPT20, Predictit's going to match your first $20 investment. Uh, that was, Mike, that was your first trade, wasn't it? Oh, that certainly was. A 100% return. What was your first trade? A $20 investment? <laughs> $20 investment, got the 20 back, had 40 to play with. There you go. 100% on your first trade. So that's available to anybody, any listener. Just go to predictit.org slash promo slash TPT20. And for any amount over $20 that you open up your account in, which takes just a matter of minutes, uh, Predictit's going to match your first $20. So Scott is our super trader on the line with us. Thanks, Scott, again, for coming back after the break. And we know you have some primary trade ideas that you want to share. Uh, let's start with number one. What are you looking at? First, I want my 20 bucks because I had to start <laughs> on my own money. <laughs> we should clarify that's for new traders, the, yes, the promo yes, code. <laughs> yes. Well, I was a new trader once, but I didn't get 20 bucks. Either did um, I. <laughs> my, my, my best trade at the moment is to short Biden. Um, he just, he's not raising money. He's, he did not do well in Iowa. Uh, he seems unable to speak at times. Um, he, you know, <laughs> It just seems logical at this point that, that Joe Biden is going to is going to implode. Are you trading? Um, are, you, are you trading off of uh, statements like this? We had a good night last night in Iowa, and I I know you think that's silly, but you know, everything we can feel, it's good. Here's the deal: we think we're going to come out of there really doing well, but you know we're you know be careful what you say because it's not done yet. Be careful what you say. It's not done yet. <laughs> that, this is what why did I he do... say? <laughs> I'm not really sure. Still trying to this decipher. Is, <laughs> this is why I do not listen to politicians because if I listen to that, I would go buy more no's. <laughs> <laughs> and I really need to be careful and buy them on other information and not on what I think is happening to Joe Biden's brain. So no's on Biden, what, what markets would have appealing pricing right now? Well, at the moment, at the moment, uh, New Hampshire. Um, He's probably overpriced for second in New Hampshire, and, and you know I think I think Pete might pull off second in New Hampshire. So, it, and Nevada is Nevada is a real good test. I could say right now that I might hold off on shorting Joe in the South until I see how he does with Latinos. In well, Nevada. let's talk about New Hampshire first. New, in New Hampshire, uh, Joe Biden is a four percent as or, or four cents as a yes, or three cents as a yes, and a ninety-seven cent no. And uh, New Hampshire is just a couple days away over on March 11th. In fact, Scott, you're going to come back after New Hampshire for us for the Absolutely. first time. Terrific. And we'll see how well that trade works. So, so uh, no's are 97 cents on Biden in New Hampshire and moving on to Nevada. Uh, the, well, that market, the New Hampshire first place market is what we refer to as DED, dead. Um, it, it, the real action for New Hampshire is in second place. Uh, is Joe going to beat Pete? And at the moment, Pete is 45 cents and Joe is 22 cents. And Warren is 17 cents. So it's a that's an interesting race for second place. I'm pretty sure Bernie's going to win New Hampshire. Uh, it's an interesting discrepancy between his price in the first place market and the second place market. He seems overpriced in the second place market where you can get his no for 14 cents at the moment. 
I mean, he's at 14. You can get the no for 86 cents. So Bernie, no in, in second place because he's probably going to win. And then you've got yourself with what might be a two or three way race for second place. Yeah, I say, well, you make me feel good hearing about your forecast on Bernie in New Hampshire. I'm long there from 67 cents and a yes. And uh, oh, good price. Which asks a good question, by the way. I, I know there's a common wisdom in Predict It to try to get out before expiration. But mm. does that is that always the case? Uh, do you get the, out in the high 90s or do you hold it till expiration if you have a high degree of confidence? Uh, one of the things about Predict It that's a lot of fun is that there are rules named after different players. One of my favorite player is I Savage, who lives there in Chicago. Um, he has a rule, always sell at 90. I think that's a little um, overly general. I don't always sell at 90. Sometimes I hold things even till ex they expire and wait for that extra penny. Um, but generally, in anything that you feel the least bit queasy about holding, sell at 90 is my advice, yes. All right. So your first trade is uh, look for look for opportunities to short Biden by buying no's in, in upcoming primaries. So let's move on to your second trade. What do you have for us? Uh, well, the, have we underestimated Pete? Um, there's a, I have a lot of questions. I'm not a polling expert, but I wonder if polls have somewhat to use a Bushian word, misunderestimated him. Uh, he 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 seems to be uh, doing extremely well in places where we thought Biden would do well. So if he becomes the new Biden, he could tap into a lot of votes. And if we're missing this somehow, is it because pollsters don't ask respondents if they're gay or or LBGDQ. I don't, it, there's a lot of questions for me. I don't know enough about it to be able to answer them, but I do know enough about it to not short peak too much anymore. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm doing what I call washing some shares in some places where I'm going to take the loss selling that no for as, as much as I can get for it and then buy back in cheaper. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for this. Uh, market making is another good tactic that I like to use. Uh, if there's big spreads, um, you can get in there, get yourself some shares, and then put some of them up for sale immediately and and close those gaps down, close those spreads down. And you can make a lot of money churning. Uh, Jipkin, who I read uh, mentioned earlier, Jason Pipkin, made about $7,000 just churning shares in gaps in the big markets. So there's a lot of, if you're a tactical trader and you come from the stock world, you can look at some of these markets and some huge, what would seem to you, incredible errors going on just a lot of it due to lack of volume but even in the big volume markets you'll see gaps where you can get in there and and uh, find that candle chart and find the trading range and get yourself in that trading range and buy a bunch the other the i savage rule that i love the most is double up and sell half so buy twice as many as you think you need with the intention of immediately selling half of them for some profit to help you pay for the whole endeavor and there's tons of opportunities like that all over predicted where you don't even have to care who it is you're putting money on you just need to get in there and do the market mechanics well and that that sounds a lot more that sounds a lot more prudent than an old trading floor rule of losing traders that i used to hear which was double up to catch up which is it's oh. not it's not highly recommended S sunk cost fallacy <laughs> one of my favorites exactly so, <laughs> so you are um you are not buying no's on Pete, and you're looking for opportunities to purchase yes shares as well? I'm uh, Well, I'm doing what is essentially the same as buying yes shares, which is I'm selling no shares, mm -hmm. and I'm selling some of them at a loss, I will, I'm not ashamed to admit. Right. Um, a lot of us underestimated Pete. Mm -hmm. And at, right now, I'm, I have uh, a handful of shares that I paid 70 cents for, no shares on Pete, in second place in New Hampshire, and I'm underwater on those. The same is true of Bloomberg, which is another trend that we should mention, is that, you know, every pro I know is underwater on Bloomberg right now. And, and you guys were saying all the amateurs are are, are long on Bloomberg. My, Mike and I have been picking up pennies in Bloomberg over the last week. Uh, so you're eating you're eating our lunch, guys. So far, so good. So what's the third trade you want to share with us? Oh, what did I have on that one? Oh, Warren in Massachusetts might be under. I mean, it's her home. Geography matters. Her home state should be good for her. So that, you know, I think maybe take a small yes on Warren in, in Massachusetts. There's, I have friends in Nevada. 
they're very impressed by her uh, minority outreach, especially to women groups. So she might surprise in Nevada the way she surprised in Iowa. We have a we don't have a second place mark. I can't remember if we have second place in Nevada. I don't think so. But I wish we did. We've been asking for it. Maybe we'll get it. Uh, it would be nice to have a second and third place market in Nevada because she, I would love to see what her price would be for a third and second place market. She might surprise people just like she did in Iowa. Well, currently in Massachusetts, Warren is uh, selling for 24 cents. Biden's in, I, I'm sorry, Bernie Sanders is in front at 51 cents. So there's certainly opportunity for some upside there. And Bloomberg well, she was is way up third. earlier. Yeah, oh. she was way up earlier. And yeah, he's he's been spending a lot of money in these uh, Super Tuesday states. And, uh, you know, nobody's competing with him because everybody else is in the first two. So... Mike, you know, what, a, what has been the trading range on on uh, Elizabeth Warren over the last 30 or 90 days in Ma in Massachusetts? Uh, let's see here. She was up. She was up a lot for a while. And uh, they came in and, and uh, took that down real quick when she started falling in the polls. You know, it was funny. Once she was asked to explain how she would pay for something, uh, she dropped like a rock. And then they ask Bernie the same question, and she gives he gives the speech from Network about how we're not going to take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I think her biggest mistake was that she thought people really cared how she was going to pay for things, because I don't think people care about that anymore. I, they they just want to hear the speech from Network. <laughs> <laughs> you know, go to your window, scream, you're not going to take. I want <laughs> universal health care. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, she. If Other you look than, at the candle chart for, for Massachusetts uh, for 90 days, you can see she, I mean, just look at any chart. So other than buying uh, perhaps yeses in Warren in Massachusetts, is there another way to play that? Uh, at the moment, I think Bernie might be a little, actually the market looks pretty pretty good right now at the, at the moment. It's, it's hard to say. Um, I don't think Bloomberg is going to win Massachusetts. It's either Bernie or, or Warren. Uh, I think Biden's probably, you can count him out. I, I don't think Pete will do well in, you know, I think it's a two person race in Massachusetts. So the, the so the trick would be to, my method would say, go in there and buy nose on everybody but Bernie and Elizabeth first, just do that first. And if you have the bankroll to do it, just max as many no contracts as you can. I mean, I paid, I have 902 shares of Hillary no in Massachusetts that I paid 94 cents each for. <laughs> So if you're if you're in a market early enough, you can get these these silly people that are believing QAnon, and you can take their money. <laughs> well, that's well, that's a good way to close out the trade segment here. We're going to come right back in one minute just to ask you for your for your luck box of the week, and we'll be right back. Okay, well, we're we're back with Scott Supak, Super Trader. That's S S U P A K at on Twitter, and you can follow Scott, who speaks frequently on his trading activity on at Predicted.org. And remember, you can open up a Predicted.org account and make a quick twenty dollars by going to Predicted.org slash promo slash TPT twenty. Uh, Scott, thanks for uh, sharing your tactics and some trades with us today. We have um, something in Luckbox Magazine, each issue called Luckbox of the Month. And as a gambler, you know the term Luckbox. It's somebody who is the recipient of under, undeserving luck, uh, someone who has just um, received an outcome that they're not worthy of. So we ask uh, our guests to come up with their best idea for the luck box of the week. And uh, we want to hear from you. So who do you have for us? I thought a lot about this one and it's, it, I, I, I'm not a big believer in accidental winning. I think anybody that won probably deserves it. But if, if there is an accidental winner on predicted, it's anybody who wins in a tweet market. <laughs> so tell predict, us about the tweet markets. <laughs> tweet markets. They, they're a relatively new phenomenon to me. They've been around for a few years is you just betting on how many times, a week somebody's going to tweet so real donald trump i think they have aoc uh they have yang um i played them for a while it's hard you have to stay tethered to the tweeter um you you should build a model uh, and look at go through the twitter data build a model find out how when they tweet and all that kind of thing but it's all just a crapshoot it's anybody that wins in those things is essentially and, and says they did it because they're skilled instead of lucky is probably not 100% telling you the truth. There is a lot of luck involved in tweet markets, and I just generally stay out of them. 
And to be clear, the tweet markets refer specifically to how many times someone is going to tweet in a given period of time. So, for example, on the uh, President Trump tweet market, it ranged from January 31st to February 7th. And the the ranges were anywhere from 64 or lower up to 100 or more. The ones on the end are, are have what we call tail risk. Yeah. So sometimes people, a lot of people will just short B1. You know, they'll short bracket. We, we refer to brackets by B, B1, B2. Um, so sometimes people have strategies where they'll just short that first bracket because they think he's going to go over that, that first amount. So it becomes an over under bet if you take it that way which I guess mitigates your risk to some degree, but I'm just not a big fan of tweet markets. So Scott, I want to thank you again for uh, sharing some of your insights and trading strategies and actual trades with us today. And we do want to have you back after the March primary. We figure by, uh, for New Hampshire primary results, we figure Mm -hmm. by then we'll know what happened in Iowa as well. (laughs) Well, I'd love to come back after Nevada because that's going to be the really important one, I think. Uh, It's the first primary with uh, people of color. So it's going to matter a, a little bit more than the others, I think. Well, we look forward to having you back. Thanks again, and we'll we'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us from Luckbox Magazine. I'm Jeff Joseph. And I'm Mike Reddy. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>